Hello. For the module Minerals and Rocks, I'm going to provide you with a few mini lectures as opposed to the longer lectures that I recorded for the introduction to Earth and for the solar system. The reason for this is that your textbook and lab book have many very good videos that I want and expect you to watch and listen to as you go through the reading and the laboratory material. Um, and I don't feel there it would be uh, helpful to you if I just repeat what is contained in those videos. So in these mini lectures, I'm just going to highlight some of the most important concepts. So with minerals, I have a subtitle here that says the building blocks of rocks and using physical properties to identify minerals. So let's touch on that first point here. Um, so minerals, you know, why do we care about minerals? What's the big deal? Because in any earth science or geology class, you're going to learn something about minerals. Well, first off, they are the building blocks of rocks. All rocks are made of minerals and earth is made of rock. So it seems obvious that the study of rocks and the study of minerals that they uh, contain should be an essential component of the study of earth science. Minerals also have practically unlimited economic uses. We use the ingredients of minerals, the elements that the minerals are made of, in the materials we use in our daily lives. In fact, it is estimated that every person in the United States will use more than 3 million pounds of rocks, minerals, and metals during their lifetime. The composition of the minerals in magma and in rocks dictate geologic processes like volcanic eruptions and the rate of erosion. So minerals are playing a very important role in that way as well. And then finally, minerals give us an insight to the past environments on and below Earth's surface. Mineral groups. Minerals are organized into groups based on their composition meaning the elements that have chemically bonded together to make up the mineral crystal. The most common group of minerals found in rocks are the silicates. These utilize the two most abundant minerals in Earth's crust, oxygen and silicon. From this foundation, other elements bond to create other minerals. Altogether, there are over 4,000 minerals on Earth, but only a couple dozen are commonly found in rocks. A second mineral group worth mentioning are the carbonates, which are uh, always going to include calcium and oxygen in their chemical formula, as we see here. And these are very common in sedimentary rocks. So again, the silicates and the carbonates are the two most important mineral groups in terms of the minerals that make up the rocks um, that we find on and below Earth's surface. Especially for the igneous rocks, the silicates are of great import importance. They include common minerals like quartz and the feldspars, which are in almost all igneous rocks. Physical properties of minerals. Now, as previously mentioned, there are over 4,000 minerals. Unfortunately for, for us, we are not going to have to worry about the vast majority of those, but instead, only a few of the most common minerals, the ones that are most commonly in rocks. To tell these apart, we have to use the physical properties of these minerals. Color is, for us as humans, probably the physical trait that we very uh, that we most commonly use to distinguish things from one another. However, color can be problematic because it is an ambiguous property. Um, and the reason this is is because the color varies within an individual mineral. For example, quartz can be almost any color. It's very commonly clear, but it can be gray, pinkish, brown, uh, yellow, um, so, in that way, it's not a good property to use. 
So how could we tell if something is quartz? Then we would look at other physical properties, such as luster, which is roughly the shininess of the mineral. And as you will discover through your reading and lab work, luster is divided into two categories, metallic or non-metallic. Metallic luster is if a mineral looks like a metal. Think of like chrome bumpers on a car. Um, the chrome has this metally look to it, and some minerals look like a metal. Most minerals do not. The most common minerals um, have different degrees of shininess, but they are not metallic looking. Now, streak is a more diagnostic property as opposed to ambiguous. Diagnostic meaning it's more reliable. Streak is the color that some minerals will give if you scratch the mineral across a streak plate. And again, this is going to be discussed in more detail in one of the videos that you're going to come across in your reading. If we were meeting in a traditional lab setting, then we would be doing uh, streak tests along with other tests to determine these physical properties you see listed here. But because we are um, participating in this class in an online setting, we will rely on the videos, which will be the best um, virtual way to get a grasp on these different physical properties. So again, watch the videos because they're well done and will give you a pretty good sense of how to treat these physical properties. Crystal shape or habit. Crystal shape is the different uh, geometric shapes the crystals grow if allowed to grow freely, meaning that in some environments the crystals can grow in a way that they can achieve their true shape. They can look like cubes or prisms or blades um, and they can be quite pretty. These are the kind of crystals that you might see in a museum or in somebody's collection if they like to collect minerals. So um, again, you'll uh, be investigating this further as you go through the lecture and the lab material. Hardness is a mineral's resistant resistance to scratching. Think of a diamond. Perhaps you've heard that diamonds are very hard. In fact, diamonds are the hardest known substance. They are unscratchable. Quartz, a much more common mineral, is also quite hard and very difficult to scratch. On the other end, some minerals are very soft, like talc or gypsum, where you can scratch them with your fingernail. Cleavage. Cleavage is the tendency for some minerals to break along planes of weakness that are created by the way the elements chemically bond to one another. This will allow the minerals to break in flat, um, break along flat surfaces, which in turn will uh, dictate their crystal shape. Specific gravity is another way to describe the density or the heaviness of a mineral. And then some minerals have some of these miscellaneous properties, such as magnetism, it's magnetic, taste, like halite, tastes very salty, odor, double refraction, reacting with acid, such as calcite, which is a carbonate mineral when um, you drop diluted hydrochloric acid on it, it will fizz, and striations, which are these parallel grooves that you'll see across the face of a mineral crystal. These miscellaneous properties can be quite helpful because they are unique and diagnostic. So this is a little introduction to minerals. Uh, dive into the lab uh, and lecture material and you're going to learn much more about this stuff. And again, pay close attention to the videos.